Hi everybody. Uh, I would like to discuss a boring topic today, but I do find it extremely important and useful in a practical game. The topic would be how to hold a draw with one pawn down in a rook end game, or how to create problems if you have extra pawn but the position is a drawn one. Statistically speaking, rook end games are the most likely to happen, so it makes sense to, to know uh, some ideas from it. Not only to know, but be able to execute it under extreme conditions. Usually these kind of end games happen at the end of the game, four or five hour game, you're tired, you're hungry, right? You want to go to the bathroom, apologies. Um, so I believe the knowledge of this end game should be automatic. Like your hand should know what to do. You shouldn't figure out the end game during the game. Like if I wake you up at 4 a.m. in the middle of the night, you still would be able to give checkmate with the queen or with the rook, right? You don't need to figure it out. Your hand knows what to do. And I believe this kind of end game should be, uh, your hand should know it. Because I found many examples of strong grandmasters losing similar or completely misplaying similar end games in a game with long time control or in rapid games. The list con con uh, includes Magnus Carlsen, although it was 11 years ago, but he was almost 2700. You can check the game against Aronian, Tal Memorial, I think, 2007. Uh, Jan um and other strong. I was specifically looking for 2700 players and they were misplaying this kind of position. Not because it's very difficult, but because of the conditions they were in during the game. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I believe the, the knowledge of this position and the way to be thinking in this sort of position, which I would help you understand better, uh, would, would benefit you uh, in the future. So it is, uh, it is black to move in this position. How do you hold this? So first of all, I assume that you know Philidor position. If white's king was on e5, that would be simple. Rook goes to a6, cutting off the king, and that's pretty much it. If white goes d6, rook comes back to a1, and that's a simple draw. So I do not pay attention to that one. I would like to, because it's quite rare that you get a Philidor position when you're defending it. So the second way to hold this position, uh, I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it is rook behind the pawn and king on the short side. But there is one way to handle this position even without any, any uh, knowledge whatsoever. The only question you should be asking yourself when defending this or for that matter any bad position where you have no counterplay, no counterplay for black, right? So the only thing to do is to prevent your opponent from improving. If he cannot improve, that would be a draw, right? So the question to ask on every move is what is the threat? What would he do if it was his move? That's the question to ask. So let's ask this question. Let's say black does nothing. Let's say rook a2, a dull move. What would happen? If you take a look, it happens. Rook h8 check. King c7, d6 check, and pawn promotes because the rook supports it. If king goes to c6, rook c8 check, king moves and d7, pawn promote it. Well, black should resign. So this is a clear threat to give a check and then push the pawn uh, until promotion. What can we do about it? We cannot prevent rook h8, but we can prevent d6. Believe it or not, the only move that holds a draw in this position is rook to d1, anticipating check and stopping d6. The only move that makes a draw is this one. So what happens here? How can white make progress? If white goes d6, it's check. That's easy. So uh, if white gives check, king goes here. Now we are, have a threat to give a check and then put the king in front of the pawn. So the only thing white can do is to check again, which uh, come back to original position. So what should white do? It's king d6, right? Again, ask the question, what is the threat made in one? Uh, so we have to run with the king. In this case, it doesn't matter which way to run, but generally speaking, you should always choose the short side king c8 and the reason for that is we need the long side to have possibility for a rook to give bunch of checks to the king 
when necessary. So king c8. What can white do? White would give a check, right? We want to get rid of the king, move the king away. King to b7. So now what happens here? White does need to push the pawn, otherwise there is no way to win. So how can white do that? White can try king e6, right? Preparing d6. So you ask the question, what does he want? He wants d6. How can I stop it? Simple, king c7. We've seen this position before, we're threatening check. The only way for white to continue is to go rook h7 check. King d8, always come back in front of the pawn. Usually that's the best place for the king. Your pawn needs to kick you out. We come back to original position. So king e6 doesn't help. What else can white do? White can go rook h5, right? Let's take a look at this one. Why did white play this one? What is white's next move? What is the threat? The threat is king d7. White supported the pawn to go king d7 and d6 and make progress. What can we do about king d7? We can do, always ask the question, what's the threat? How can I handle it? We can handle it with king to c8. And king e7 never works because I give a check, right? If white goes rook e5 in this position, which is a decent, okay, we can now come back here, so it doesn't make sense. So if rook h5, we go king c8 and we stopped. So white would have to come back um, and start over. White goes rook e8. This is, by the way, a similar position to how Magnus Carlsen lost it. Rook e8 happened. Why did white play this move? What is the threat? The answer is there is no threat. White cannot push the pawn, nothing has changed. King d7, king e7, still not possible. King e6 is not a threat, we always have king c7. White played rook e8 with no threat. If there's no threat, what do you do? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. You do a waiting move that doesn't change the nature of the position. What is the waiting move here? Rook d2 a good example. We just wait. You're the one who need to make progress, right? So white would go rook e5. Why did white play this move? White prepared king d7, protected the pawn. How do we handle that? King c8. If we can move the king closer to the promotion square, that's always a good idea. King c8, what should white do? If white plays, let's say, rook f5 move. What does white want? Nothing. Nothing has changed. Rook here or here doesn't matter. We do a waiting move. That's it. What if white plays king e6? What is the threat? Well, now d6 is the threat. What can we do about it? King c7, for example. There are other moves, but this one would, would be enough. So if rook leaves the 8th rank, we just return and white cannot make progress. So what should white do? What is the way to create prop? Now the rook d8 is a way to try to make progress. It looks weird. Why do you put a rook in front of the king? But if you take a closer look, if it was white to move, what would white do? What did white prepare with rook d8? White prepared king e7 with the idea to push a pawn. So the first intention, we should stop king e7. How can we do that? We can try rook e2, which is an inaccuracy. Rook e2, we stopped king e7, but we uh, let white go to d7, and white managed to push the pawn to d6. With the precise play, the pawn will never reach d6. So, rook went to d8. Until this moment, we were not using the fact that our king went to the short side, and we have the long side available for the rook. Until this moment, we were able to manage the threat um, without using the checks from the side. This is exactly the moment to use uh, this, this idea. Only when the rook is in front of the king, it is not able to guard him, it's time to move the rook as far as possible to the long side. What happens now? If white makes any move with the king, we give lots of checks. King e7, we give a check. King e6, we give a check. There's no way to hide our king would approach. It doesn't make any sense for white. So if white plays rook e8, what do we do? Rook e8. Now there's, what is the threat now? The threat is king d7, right? This is the threat. If we give checks, the rook will protect the king. 
We've seen this position before. What do we do? King d7 is a threat. How do we stop it? We return back to d2. Remember, when white just played rook e8, there was no threat, so we just wait. Rook d8, rook h2. If rook comes back to it, rook d2. And that's pretty much it. That's how you hold this endgame. The pawn will never reach d6 square with a precise play, specifically on every move asking the question, what is the threat, how can I handle it? And bear in mind, rook behind the pawn, king on short side. Maybe the only thing white can try to do here is to give check, rook d7. We always come back to c8. If rook goes to e7, well, I don't know, we can give it and just come back to d2. It's always a good idea to move the rook behind the pawn. White can give check from c7. Mm. Yeah, we just go to d8. And now we are threatening to g even get a Philidor position. Frankly, I don't see how white can create problems once you go rook h2. White should go rook e8 and we immediately come back. And that is pretty much it, how you hold this endgame. Bear in mind the question, why did he play this move? Is there a threat? If the answer is there is no threat, just make a waiting move as a rook. And only use the long side when the rook is precisely in front of the pawn. So that the rook cannot hide the king from checks. And only then use the long side. Uh, by the way, uh, For those of you who wonder what what is the winning one, so the for this this way uh, of securing the game doesn't work when the king is on long side. Let me show you an example. So we have similar position, but shifted very much to the right. Right, the king was here. That was the position. So what's the difference now? How can white win this one? The only way to win this one for white is to put the rook in front of the pawn. Because this is the only situation where the, when the weaker side has to use the long side. All the other ways do not work. Rook a5, preparing king f7, we handle it with king e8, like in previous example. Uh, rook g8 has no threat, we make a waiting move. Rook g5, protecting king, F7, king e8. We always handle it. King g7 never works, not here, not in previous example. It's king e7, and now the rook cannot even move. Now it's a draw. So the only way to win this one is to put rook in front of the pawn, and now there's not enough room on the king side to give checks. If white goes through, black goes rook h1, it's king g7, and there are no checks. White will push the pawn to f7, and eventually it would appear on f f6, and then on f7, and then Lucena position, or the bridge, or there are other winning mechanisms. I hope you are aware of them. So this is how you handle Past pawn, rook behind the pawn, king on short side. For actually, for central pawns, for the central pawn, let me give you an example. For the central pawn, the one we just considered, you can actually use the long side for your king because king e8, rook h8, king f7. As you recall, the only way to try to win this one is to go rook d8 to support the pawn and then prepare king c7 but now rook a1 and for the central pawns it is enough there's exactly two squares between the rook two files between the king and the rook and king moves we we are able to give the check and if the king moves we always have king e7 king approach and that's it through the c pawn and f pawn it's it's losing but for the central pawn you can actually lose even the longer side if for some reason the shorter side is not available but default setting king to the short king to the shorter side that's how you make a draw and that's how you try to win this one with the precise play the pawn will never reach the sixth rank if white is the one attacking i hope you learned Maybe in future videos I would show examples how... Oh, okay, I don't want to embarrass strong players. I hope you learned it. If you wish to find examples of the game strong players lost, off the top of my head, Aronian Carlson, I think 2007. Uh, 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 Jan Neponne, she lost to 
uh, Kamsky got a Kamsky in 2011 in the World Cup. They didn't manage to stop the F pawn, even though it was far away. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough. I hope you learned. I hope you will be able to, to make a draw with your hand if you understood the ideas. Not the specific moves. Specific moves will change. The color, uh, white, black could change. The placement of the rooks could change. But if you grasp the idea, I think you'll be all set. Okay, I hope you enjoyed and learned. See you probably in a week. Take care. Like, share, subscribe, whatever. Spread the word at your convenience. Take care. Goodbye.